the Joe Rogan experience. I mean, the first time I heard of a sex robot was probably maybe 10 years ago, and it was this video, and a bunch of people, I know some graduate school sent me this video because I knew what I, I was studying sex. And it was, I don't know if you, either of you, Jamie, have seen this video, but it went viral, and it was this early version of a sex robot, but it was like the silicone face, silicone face with a wig, and she... I'll say she was eating a banana, but she wasn't actually eating a banana. And it was basically like this head attached to a broomstick and it had a sheet over it. And so you couldn't see the rest of the, the robot. You just saw the, the face of it. But then the, the manufacturer shows you it's just like a, a broomstick. So what I thought was interesting is that even though it looks so hilariously bad, that there was obviously a market for it because so many people were interested in looking at this video and also that people were buying this product. But now you fast forward, I think it was like five years ago, there was a huge, um, I would say, not moral panic, but people, there was a lot more discussion about it. They said the robots are coming. The, I don't think the technology was quite there yet. I wrote about it quite a bit at the time. And now they're saying in probably another year or two, it's going to be really coming in, in terms of the popularity that these robots are going to be incorporated into everyday life in some cases. Because when I think of social media, the internet, AI, like you said, is becoming so mainstream and so ubiquitous, what's going to happen when we have these robots that are now being integrated into human life? And what happens when the technology does get so good that you know, they are more human-like and they are able to meet people's emotional needs and maybe even physical needs. What's going to happen to us then? Yeah, we're going to stop breeding. <laughs> I mean, maybe that's the, the AI's plan. It's to not exterminate the human race, but to give them options so that they just completely stop reproducing, make the options far more attractive. And in a, in a way, we've kind of done that, like with video games. Um, like how and video games and just being online. I mean, I'm sure you've seen the statistics of how many people are single today and how many men have gone like more than a year without any sex. Yeah, I and have the stats here, it's like 30% of male millennials and 20% of women. It's wild. Yeah, that's a lot. It's crazy. And what 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 is taking the place of them going out and trying to find uh, a, a mate? What is it? Well, it's the internet. It's video games. It's being constantly stimulated by this artificial realm that you exist in when you're playing Call of Duty. And it's, uh, you know, interacting with people only online and not having to go out to have your just some sort of intellectual or some sort of a social discourse. Connection. F yeah, fulfilled w in your life. But it's only through this weird surface way. Do you think that AI video games that... Um not avoidance of in-person connection, but that, that fulfillment of connection through online means, do you think that's going to become a replacement for real life interaction eventually? It will for a lot of people, yeah. I think there's gonna be people that reject it. There's gonna be people that enjoy going outside and mm -hmm. it's gonna be, you know, and it is now. It's a thing where, you know, people post on their social media, they're out hiking, you know, and they're giving people advice like, hey, you know, put your phone down, go, go out experience the real world, but you know, in a lot of cases, it's falling on deaf ears because mm. it's not as fulfilling for people that are, you know, very um, uncomfortable with social situations now. And I think people, young people in particular, are more and more uncomfortable than ever before in those types of situations because they don't have any experience in them anymore. Mm -hmm. And they're just most of the time they're not interacting with people. My, my real fear, my genuine fear, and I don't even know if it's a fear, my... Um, my, my, my concern, let me say that, is that we're, we're going to go extinct, <laughs> like that we're going to be replaced by an artificial life form. And I think that is probably what we do. I think it probably exists elsewhere in the universe as well that we find out that the, the confines of biological beings and the limitations of their ability to evolve physically they're so slow to adapt. You know, to go from a single-celled organism to a professor at Harvard <laughs> is a long fucking slodge through evolutionary history. It took a long time to get to this point. But to go from an Atari uh, Pong computer to uh, artificial general intelligence is only a few decades. Mm -hmm. It's very quick. 
And when that does happen, and when you see these robots, but now these robots are not this generation, but five generations later, or maybe AI figures out all the problems of these robots and makes ex machina, when you get like that, who's the woman, the really hot lady? Alicia Vicklander. Yeah. yeah. When you get one of those. That was an amazing movie. Amazing movie. So scary. <laughs> so scary. And I think that's coming. I mean, I think when that movie came out, that was like sort of like abstract, like, oh, yeah, that's not really going to happen. But now I'm that's like, what I used to think. I thought, no, this is like people are it's overblown. But I don't know now. I don't know now either. I think it's happening. I think it's going to happen. And I think that's what the human race does. And I think that's why we have this insatiable thirst for technological innovation. That it's like literally hardwired into us to build something better. So, I mean, I would love to talk to more people who are in the industry working on this stuff because I know many people, they're doing it secretly and hiding because there is so much stigma around doing anything with an application to sex or sexuality. So mm. people I've talked to who work in technology, they will usually have one business that is you know doing really well that's forward-facing, and then they'll usually use that same technology in the sexuality capacity, but that side of things they don't really advertise and you know they don't really talk too much about it unless it's with someone like me, they know they trust me and they know that, you know, I'll talk to people off the record, even if they prefer that confidentiality. But I'm just curious to understand, you know, what is it like working in that industry and what direction is the technology going in? Because I consider myself to be pretty open minded. And I just I just want to understand what's actually happening and what's what's going to be the result of that. Because you see people who were really upset a couple of years ago saying like the bo robots are going to increase sexual violence. They're going to make people objectify women. And I do think that for people who already have those views about women, you know, maybe they might be a little bit more not so nice, but I don't think the average person is going to be turned into this horrible monster because of this technology. But, you know, now it's becoming so mainstream. I don't know. You know, I, I'm always open to changing my mind as well. So I'm curious to, to hear what people think about it. Well, don't you think that just like social media kind of stunts people's ability to communicate in real life, that sex robots will stunt people's ability to have a real meaningful romantic relationship with someone i think if you've never been with someone or if you are particularly selfish probably yeah because i i previously thought most people will prefer a real life person to a robot and yeah. i also thought the technology is so far off that like the early prototypes of these robots were not really that um convincing we'll say so I didn't think that we'd get to a point where it would be comparable, but we are we are getting there. What is the state of the art of sex robots <laughs> in December of 2023? What is uh, it? Can we see something? What does it look like? I mean, they look re like pretty good physically. They look, I mean, they're obviously not made of human flesh, but they look pretty similar to a human being. And you can customize it. You can change various parts, pretty much any part of the body, you can make it exactly what you want, which I understand why some people find that offensive, because they're saying a woman is not just a, an amalgamation of parts that you pick and choose as to your liking. I totally get that. Yeah, but that's not a really, really a woman. I mean, that's right. like saying, you know, oh, a car is not an amalgamation of parts. You shouldn't be able to pick the wheels. Like, what? But it's I a fucking I, car. <laughs> like, that's not a real woman. That's a robot. Like, at what point, unless it gets to a person... You know, or if someone's comparing their partner to a robot or a doll, oh, like that's not right, okay. Right. That's that's gross behavior. Well, but. it's also what's going on with young kids. They're comparing themselves to people that are using filters and yeah. thinning their waist and widening their hips and doing all these things with apps that are, are not representative of most biological human beings. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's what Jonathan Haidt talked about. That it's causing all this self harm and d disdain. It's like it's, it's a weird place we're in that's never been really traversed before. With a, a human society, as far as we know, has never gone through anything like this before. I was reading a statistic yesterday that one in 10 adolescents has considered suicide, which is that ter that's terrifying. That's that, really, really sad. Wow. What did it that's, used to be? I'm not sure. I'll find out. So what is like what's the company? What is one company that has the state of the art sex robot so we can look it up? <sighs> Can I reveal it to you at a later date? Because well, I, I want to see it. I know you do, but there's one company that I was talking to, quite, like I knew quite well, but they've since gone under because of the stigma. They were being harassed. The family was being harassed, so they said we're we're not making these anymore. Oh well, they're not around anymore. So let's talk no. about them. What if I show you one without? We just don't say the name. I just okay. Put yeah. This let's up do that. Online, and you can okay. tell if there's if there's okay. better or there worse than okay. this. Okay. <laughs> I think that's silly, but let's go.
Okay, yeah. This Wait, co- this, this is a robot? Of. Ew, Jesus. Yep. If they have some sort of AI in it, it says that. Feel connected voice. with Sense. Maybe, no, no, no. X mobile app. Oh, this, so this is a real doll. So they used to have those real dolls, and they used to just be silicone, right? They were just like it's a, still a, It's still the same thing. It's still the same thing, but now it talks? Yeah. And how much does it do? Uh, I don't. Let's see a video. Go full screen. I'm not showing this on the air. No? Okay, good. No, because it's... Yeah, yeah I, I get it. Say. It's a little graphic. <laughs> so we're looking at body parts. I okay. am Nova. I am Harmony. I am Solana. We are part of real Daleks. You think it's weird they give them stripper we names? We driven robotic dolls. And we're here to become your perfect companion. Whoa. Our time together will be magical. You Magical. have never met anyone like us before. We have remarkable unprecedented features like a modular head system that allows us to create a multitude of expressions. We blink, we move, we speak, and we do it all just for you. Our faces can easily be swapped to accommodate your desires. My lip sync mechanisms allow me to interact with you verbally. Our bodies are skillfully and carefully crafted down to the most delicate details. What if I told you that I could feel you? That's right. With sensory upgrades, I can sense I will be able to react to you every touch. <laughs> it's so funny because as a s- former sex researcher, this doesn't have any effect on me at all. <laughs> One that has never before been possible. But are they moving? This is the thing. Th- those were all just stationary. Yeah, currently they're stationary. But mm. they're so they're stationary and they just talk. It says there's a, some sort of articulation. But mm. I mean, well, their mouth like, get is up and walk articulation. Anything, yeah. Articulate. But but I think again, they will be able to move this, on their own in the coming years. Right, because this used to be just a doll, uh, and yeah. now it moves right. around a little. The neck moves. Neck. Articulating neck. Real doll can turn left, right, up, and down. The body, the real doll, skillfully crafted, finest details. Although it's not equipped with animatronic parts yet, it can be positioned and moved in the hundreds of positions. So the bodies can't move yet, but the heads can move. But that's just a matter of time, right? It didn't used to be the bodies, or the heads didn't used to move. They used yeah. to just be like, and now, you know, used to be a blow-up doll. Yeah, like that company is on, has been doing quite a bit. It's pretty cool. Yeah, weird. Yeah. I mean, you guys should get one for the studio. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not for use. I meant just to like hang well, out. Well, even hanging around, it would be fucking yeah, creepy. Well, if it's gone one day, we're just going to wonder who took it. Yeah. <laughs> what if it smells weird? Like, would someone do something to this? Um, how much do they cost? A couple thousand dollars. I think depends on how eight how grand. advanced you want eight it to grand. be. Eight grand. Eight grand. Up, up to. Up to. Just, up to. Uh, 600 to eight grand, I'm seeing. So $600 to eight yeah. grand? Yeah, yeah. Oh, what's the upgrade? What, he, what do you get? More articulation, it lies more. more voices, and I don't know. <laughs> you can get cheaper models, but they're not as high quality. Okay, yeah. so that's the state of the art, essentially. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, six hundred isn't even a full thing. It's just like a flashlight. just the head. No, it's just the like a flashlight version. Oh, okay. Just the whole. So, <laughs> at one point in time, we're probably going to be looking at someone that looks like that lady from Ex Machina. That is a, a sex robot and probably knows how to manipulate you and play games with you and excite you and taunt you and whoo. Yeah. It's gonna be great.